Today's video, we're going to be checking out the NECA Toys Galermo del Toro Retro Cloth figure. Galermo del Toro creates dark, beautiful movies infused with a visual poetry and speaks directly to the heart of the viewer. In conjunction with the launch of the Galermo del Toro signature collection of action figures, NECA celebrates the visionary film director with his own figure. Before we have a look at the figure, let's figure out how tall he stands from the bottom of his shoes to the top of his head. There we go. Galermo del Toro, much like other retro cloth figures, stands at around 8 inches. In this case, 8 inches exact. If we switch that over to centimeters, then the figure itself is 20, feel the need to point at it, 20.3 centimeters in height. He only comes with one accessory, but I would feel a very crucial accessory, and that is his book. The book, from outer appearance, looks like a standard bound book. You can see right away that it's got a hinge on it, because in fact, it does open up to about there. It's on a rather awkward sort of hinge that the main spine of the book sort of takes up the majority of it, so the spine doesn't completely open up. But inside, what you are treated to is some stunning artwork as well as some written up read ups there. Really do like it. I like also the fact that it's got an aged look to it. Now I do find, now if you grab the figure here, he has two unique hands. One hand is specifically flat, while the other hand is more a gripping hand. There's a couple of different ways that you can go about doing this. Of course the obvious one is you can just lay the book in his hand, which is sort of sort of boring, or what you can do is open up the book and you can kind of slide it underneath his thumb like so. Almost as if he's reading, well, he's not quite reading the book like that, but almost as if he's about to read off a page in the book. The other way is that you can attach it on this hand, on the other hand, which involves some considerable stress, both you as the collector and the stress to his hand, to try to get it completely around the spine. I eventually just kind of gave up on the whole notion of it and instead just attached it to just underneath his thumb and his fingers. And he seems to hold the, per the book perfectly fine. He would struggle, I think, a little bit more if you have him holding the book while it's closed. So I would definitely recommend keeping the book probably open. And this way, it does look like it's something that he's reading aloud. Let's go ahead and take that out of his hand. We'll just put that to the side. For head sculpt, I think it definitely captures the look of Guillermo del Toro, right? A very uncanny head sculpt. Now, this sort of falls into the, some of the problems that I have at times with retro cloth figures. And I say that more so than I say about 7-inch variety figures. They tend at times to have chalky face paint. No, not the fact that they are wearing face paint, but the paint that they use for the figure's head sculpt. Often at times, and it seems only to be with retro cloth figures, it often comes across either muddy or chalky. I feel in the case here of Galermo del Toro, it's actually closer to being the second than the first. It's not muddy, but it does seem a little on the chalky side. And one of the common go-tos, it seems, when it comes to overly chalky faces, is ever so often you'll see like these little scratches. Just these out of nowhere, why did they have to be there, these little kind of scrush, uh, scratched scuff marks. And unfortunately, it is there on the figure. Now, some of the previously looked at retro cloth figures that I've been disappointed with, for example, was the Billy from Silent Night, Deadly Night. And of course, the one, the reanimator as well. I really didn't, ha I was not happy with how those two specifically turned out. I think the head sculpt here is actually much better. It's still a little on the chalky side, I will admit it, but I do think it, it definitely doesn't lose the head sculpt because of the paint. It still looks very much like Guillermo del Toro, right down to the, let me just show you here, the side of his face. The glasses are, well, they do have a plastic lens to them, but luckily it doesn't impede the vision or the, at the very least, the eyes that you can see behind it. You could theoretically, I suppose, take the glasses off. I really don't know 
don't really know why you would want to. Uh, hair sculpt and beard are both sculpted quite well. Add a little bit of the grays also in the side of his hair, the top, and pro predominantly, I would say, around the mustached area. It's unfortunate, though, like the packaging, if we just kind of bring that in right again. There it is, right there, packaging. He's displayed with sort of the, uh, like the set pieces with him. I kind of wish, not at the very least, that he would have a full setup wall behind him, but that he could have at least come with maybe that little, the little tombstone stone piece right there that you could display the figure with. It's almost as if perhaps that's what they were intended to go with initially. I don't know, maybe just due to uh, cuts, you know, just the, the cost of producing the figure, they ultimately just kind of passed on it. Because it definitely seems like it's not just a background that we're looking at. This seems like something very obvious that they were intended to be released with the figure. You can almost even argue for the fact that the way his hand is, the hand is sculpted the same way as it was here with something completely, uh, you know, with something in mind that's supposed to be right here that we ultimately didn't get. We'll move this out of the way. As for his outfit, he is sporting a long jacket and V-neck sweater underneath there. He's a much more padded figure than some of the previously looked at retro cloth figures. They, of course, had to fill him out a little bit, and there's some extra much-needed padding in there. Now, his sweater, very awkwardly, I never really realized it, is tucked into his pants. Um, I, I suppose you could loosen it and, and pull the sweatering out. I don't think it's actually attached to anything. I don't, again, really understand why you would really need to. You could probably guess it right off the bat. This is one of those figures that looks exceptionally good, but would be an absolute magnet when it comes to hairs and like little fluff pieces and stuff like that. He's basically head to toe all black, except for the area in which he's got the white t-shirt underneath the v-neck sweater there. The tailoring is pretty good on both the jacket, the the sweater, and of the uh, the pants there. It's funny though that the pants, if we if I just kind of tighten up the pants, he's still got the rather thin legs. So while they did support some extra padding here, they didn't put padding here. Instead, favored just having wider pant legs to make him look as if he's still big down here, which he really he really actually isn't. We move up the legs, and a very familiar sight seems to be these these specific shoes. I see I've seen these shoes on many different retro cloth figures. Here in this case, it's in a shinier black plastic, and they've varied from figure to figure. I'm sure certain as well. These boots have also made appearances with Freddy Krueger's and possibly Jason Voorhees retro cloth figures as well. Sadly, still no peg holes on the undersides of their feet. Sadly, in this instance, another case in which the figure doesn't have ball joints. The figure, I think, really should have afforded having some ball joints as something that they could potentially go the route of going down the road. Because really, I still find with certain retro cloth figures, primarily, most of them actually, they still have an issue when it comes to standing. Their feet just don't seem flat or as flat as they should be. Ironically enough, for Galermo del Toro, he's a little bit of a bigger figure, if you will. Somehow, I guess the added padding has somehow stabilized this figure that he doesn't seem to have as much the issues of standing straight up like other retro cloth figures have had. Even though, primarily, if you were to remove his article of clothing, the padding and all that extra stuff, what you would be treated with underneath all that would be a standard retro cloth body. And yet, ironically enough, he stands perfectly fine. Posability on this guy, his head rotates all the way around. He theoretically does have a bowl joint, but there's between how far down his neck goes or the under area of his chin goes and how far up his outfit goes, there really doesn't afford much moving up and down of the head. You can't really move it side to side either. So instead, you're sort of relegated to just having the head swiveling all the way around. The shoulders hinge outward. It's a little awkward on looking at it because this part here is padded. The shoulder doesn't technically start till about, till about there. So when you are moving the arms out, they seem like they move out in an area where the shoulder should be slightly further up. Uh, the arms move forward and back. He's got a bend at the elbow. He has a rotation in the hand. 
Uh, not really much in the way of waist swivel because so much of this is being occupied by additional padding. To even get in there can be a bit of a difficulty. But I suppose he does have the waist swivel. Legs split out, forward and back, bend at the knee, and he's got just a standard swivel, just a standard hinge joint on the foot. That's about all you can really get out of him. Like the figure. I do certainly like the figure. It's nice that a figure or a character, a real character, uh, such as Guillermo del Toro, uh, best of course known for directing some fantastic films, finally sees light of day in plastic form. It would be really neat if NECA would continue this trend with other big creators, both in front of the camera, behind the camera, and those who do all the magic behind the scenes. Now this, of course, ties in the conjunction with the launch of the Guillermo del Toro signature collection of action figures that we're going to be getting from NECA Toys, and I'm really excited for that. But I have to commend NECA for the fact that they would have released a plastic retro cloth figure of visionary director Guillermo del Toro. This means that when we do eventually get the Guillermo del Toro collection, it means we can put the visionary director along with some of his creations, and I really do like that idea. One of the ideas I did mention at the end of this review is something I want to talk a little bit more about is seeing what they've done here with a really bang up job on Guillermo del Toro. I'd love to see them also approach other visionaries, people that have been behind the scenes, whether it be directing films, writing the books in which the films have been based from, or ones doing movie magic behind the scenes. There's definitely a lot of visionaries, if you will, that really deserve retro cloth figure treatment as well. Two ones stand in my mind as ones I would love to see, one of which being famous author Stephen King. Imagine getting him as a retro cloth figure. You could give him maybe one of the characters from his films. The other one I would love to see, and this is sort of more somebody that's behind the scenes, although he's done cameos in films as well, is movie magic magician uh, Tom Savini. Imagine getting a Tom Savini in a retro cloth figure. I'd love to see that happen. Make it happen, NECA. I think Tom Savini deserves a retro cloth figure. That's just my own opinion. If you guys agree with my opinion, let me know down below. Or who else visionaries? We're talking like directors, authors, artists, if you will. People have done movie magic behind the scenes. Who else would you like to see as a retro cloth figure? Let me know down below. In the meantime, today we were having a look at the NECA toys. This was the Guillermo del Toro retro cloth figure. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? You're going to miss out on all the new videos coming onto this channel on a regular basis. So make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. And if you're thinking in the back of your mind, rooted way at the back of your mind, I think I may have missed something that this guy has posted in recent memory. It, the sheer volume that this guy uploads on a regular basis, to which I would agree with your the thought that your mind was having. I might have missed something along the way. How do I guarantee that I haven't missed out on any of those videos? Ah, best place you can do is, best place you can go to is right after this video, head over to the main page. Okay, so far so good. Scroll down the section that, see, that says videos. Go to the videos tab. Just sort of scroll down, see if there's anything you may have missed along the way. I always welcome new comments to these videos, but what I'd love to see too, is if you guys are all watching the older stuff that I've uploaded over the years, I was like reading new comments in those videos as well. It goes to show that not only are you guys watching the newer stuff, but you're also going back and having a look at my catalog, if you will. Is that what they call it? A catalog? You're going back and having a look at the catalog of different reviews that I've done over the years. So I always like reading new comments and old videos. More videos, guys, will be coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.